So let me show you how we draw level diagrams. You've actually seen some of this already. I think your lab manual actually had this lab level diagram. So this is how we represent energy levels in an atom or in a quantum mechanical system. And um, let me point out something that I didn't explicitly point out yet. Um, so looking at this description here, um, so any given state, you can specify it with these three quantum numbers, N, L, M, right? So if you have N equals one, that's kind of it. That's the only state, because the only allowed value of L is zero. So, and the only allowed value of M is plus minus zero. So that's the only allowed state. That's all fine. Things get more interesting with the higher values of N. Because with a higher value of n, if uh, n, l, m are all right, so let's say n equals 2, then now you are beginning to have some possibilities. You can have 0 for l, in which case we will continue to have boring 0 for m. Or you can have 1 for l. Then what are some possible values for m? Uh, minus one plus one and then zero. zero. Yeah, so going in order, minus one, zero, plus one, right? Three different projections. Yeah? So, so in other words, once you have n equals two, then there are a total of four distinct states that uh, you can solve for. And what, what we mean by four distinct states are four distinct wave functions. So different value of L, corresponds to different value of different radial wave function. And different value of m's corresponds to different uh, spherical harmonics. So that's what those distinct states are. Um, how many uh, different values of energy do you think are there for those uh, four different states? Four as in one uh, plus three, four different states. So the question is, so, um, so here we had only one state. So all right, that's it. Um, I guess we're fine. I'll leave it there. So we have one state here. And here, with starting with n equals 2, um, you can have four different states with n equals 2, right? And for each of those states, we can imagine measuring the energy of the electron. How, um, how many, what do you think is the energy of the electron in this n equals two state? Like you're looking at this formula here, right? Right? Does it seem to depend on L or M? So what that means is these four different states, they all have the same energy. They all have that value of energy, or minus 13.6 divided by 2 squared. These are what's called the degenerate states, um, or they call it degeneracy, where multiple states have the same energy. This is something new. You can only get degeneracy when you have more than two dimensions in your problem. With one dimensional setup, you will never get a degenerate uh, state. If two uh, wave functions look different, they also have different energy. Um, so one way of conveniently illustrating, like diagramming all of this, that these different quantum numbers and the fact that some of these states have the same energy is the level diagram. So let me just draw an example of energy level diagram so that we're not just talking in vacuum. So level diagram, oh, I didn't look ahead of time where in the textbook this might be drawn. It's kind of a simple diagram. Uh, let me draw mine and maybe I'll look for it if I feel there's time. Um, so I guess with the hydrogen I can do this. I can say this is where n goes to infinity. 
or this is the reference where energy is equal to zero. EV. Right? Yeah, I can do this with the infinite square wall, but with hydrogen I can. And uh, the very lowest energy state is, um, so this would correspond to E equals minus 13.6 EV for regular hydrogen. So, well, this state has, um, oh wait, sorry, I'm not, <laughs> let me draw it in a way that I normally see people do. Um, so, I mean, you know, there are different conventions uh, and that is not on a test or anything. Um, so E1, 0, 0 is equal to minus 13.6 EV. So, uh, I'm going to only draw the next two, two values of n. So the next level up, it's kind of a bit out of scale. I'll just draw it here. So this, uh, let's say this stands for E200 is equal to uh, minus 13.6 EV divided by 2 squared. And this will be the same value of energy for E210, 21 minus 1, 21 plus 1. So I'm going to draw them all this way, uh, kind of more or less on top of each other. Um, the wave function 2, 1, 0, zero, um, and zero projection along the axis. And then I'm going to have two different states to the side. So this would be where m equals plus 1, m equals minus 1. Yeah. Uh, let me draw just one more. So the next level with n is um, um, n equals 3. So with n equals 3, I have this state. So, um, uh, so I guess psi 3, 0, 0. That's a still a possibility. You can have zero angular momentum, like zero everywhere. And l equals 1 is a still a possibility. So you can have that. So psi 3, 1, 0, and then these two um, different projections on either side. And now you can have one more level of L. You can have, uh, so I kind of need to draw it right on top of each other. Psi 3, 2, 0. And there's also right on top of that. So um, I guess there's, because I'm trying to draw degenerate states. They all look um, kind of bunched on top of each other. Um, so this is one way of drawing it. You can kind of see the organization scheme. So I guess it comes down to um, you have three parameters. And if you are doing this on paper, you only have two dimensions. So you kind of have to pick the two that you are going to illustrate. I've chosen to pick n and m. So this uh, axis represents n. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. And this axis here represents m. m equals 0, minus 1, minus 2, plus 1, plus 2. So that's the choice I made. And that's one way of kind of doing the energy level diagram. And, um, and this axis here is being used for energy. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that um, um, you have these different energy levels that, um, well, you have these different states that have the same energy. Um, and um, it, so as you get to higher, more excited states, the number of states that have the same energy increases and it becomes more complex. And um, so here's a question that you should reasonably ask. If all these states have same energy, like why are we even calling them different states? Why are we somehow kind of you know um, collapsing them into one state? Like what's the distinction between having m equals plus one and m equals minus one, right? Yes, <laughs> and uh, that's where it's because these are actually physically distinct states in an experiment you can do something to lift the degeneracy. You can do something to make it so that these states end up with a different amount of energy. So this is the energy that they would have in their natural 
undisturbed hydrogen state. If it's in isolation, in vacuum chamber somewhere, no one's doing anything to it, then that's what this looks like, roughly. Um, but if you start, for example, start applying magnetic field, the electron will begin to interact with the magnetic field, and that will start to cause these energy levels to change. This uh, n plus 1 state, if you're applying positive magnetic field, then I think of this, oh, I need to <laughs> make sure I remember this. Um, I think it goes down, and this goes up, and this state remains the same. So with the application of magnetic field, you can split this degeneracy. One energy level goes down, another level goes up. And the effect that describes this is called Zeeman effect. And I guess I kind of want you to describe this in detail, but I have 20 minutes, and I'm not sure if it's uh, worth that 20 minutes. Let me point to you in your textbook where you can read about it. I, I don't know if your textbook calls it Zeeman effect, but uh, let me point to you in the textbook where you can actually read about it. So yeah, it's not here. I think it's the immediate next section. So oh, yeah, these are pictures of electron clouds that you may have seen. Uh, so I think as long as your L is equal to 0, you still have some probability of uh, being at 0 location. So all right. Um, so all right. Um, I'm usually only familiar with the ground state. So let me go to the next section. Um, well, well, that's not technically correct. I'm more familiar with the ground states than anything. By the way, so if I make you do any calculation with the hydrogen atom, it'll usually be with the ground state. I will give you the wave function. I'll give you some simplified form, and you will be given kind of exactly what to calculate. It'll be integral exercise um, if you get any calculation in this class with involving hydrogen atom. Oops. Oh, I thought there was a usually pinnable. All right. So um, this is where it actually um, requires a fair amount of time. That's why I'm just pointing you to the section of the textbook that covers it and not actually showing you. Um, it has to start with a review of magnetic dipole moment. Um, current times area of the loop. Uh, I don't think I really spent that much time on magnetic dipole moment. It's something I'm planning on fixing next semester. <laughs> um, so yeah, you have to read about it, re review it, and magnetic dipole moment. And there's the interaction with the magnetic dipole moment with um, ex or dipole moment with external field. It's a lot easier to drive that interaction with um, electro electric dipoles than magnetic dipole. But if your physics forbid teacher did a proper job, then you would have um, covered at some point potential energy of a dipole in an applied field. So that's the torque. Potential energy of a dipole in an applied field is this. So when a dipole points in the same direction as the field, you have lower energy. Um, and this is what leads to this uh, shift of energy levels. And let me see if uh, your textbook actually calls it Zeeman effect. Yeah, here, Zeeman effect. And the effect of this Zeeman effect is that these energy levels split. So where they used to be at the same, um, wait. Yeah, so where they used to be at the same, um, I guess, it's, so they are plotting the transitions where they used to be, um, so this L equals one to zero transition, it's actually potentially three different transitions because it's either, um, so either from three, no sorry, four different transitions um, subject to a selection rule that might roll out one of them. Um, oh, actually three. So with the psi two one zero, you have this state from here to here one, from here to here another, or from here to here, three. Uh, with a zero applied field, all those three transitions show you the same energy. But once you start applying magnetic field, and if you have uh, enough resolution to see it, then you will start to see that spectral line split. 
this transition will now involve lower energy. This transition will now involve higher energy. That's what this uh, splitting here is showing. And when people do the experiment, they can see that this splitting is linear in the applied magnetic field, consistent with, um, consistent with the, uh, well, consistent with the DC here. The, or, um, yeah, consistent with the DC here. And if we are dealing with a state that had a degeneracy of five, as in five different states, then you see the line splitting into five. So, um, so that's, a, how, that's how you could know experimentally that there are really five different states. They, under an applied external field, it behaves differently. Um, yeah, so, so you can read about it in detail here. I think your textbook gives you good enough of a background. And um, just as a matter of personal background, the atomic physics group I was in, a lot of our work was actually involving this. It's a, you know, it's a more other version of it. But essentially, we were using Zeeman effect to measure magnetic field. And um, it's a little bit different than vi um, visible light spectroscopy, but it's what it boils down to.